So after that whole little debacle, I made up in my mind right then and there that I'm going to get me something to drink. I'm about to enjoy the rest of my night. I need these drinks. Nothing about to stand in my way. Went out here and uh, dropped Sister Anderson off at home and took Deke on his last run. So Deke asked me what I was getting into. I told him, hey, I'm about to go have a few drinks, a little ballroom or something like that, relax and chill for the rest of the night. Well, Deke decided that he wanted to go with me. My first initial thought was to say no. But I'm like, hey, elderly guy want to get out the house. Let's go. You know, cool. So I knew I wasn't going to take him to none of the spots I go to. Might be a little too fast for him. So they say, nah, this is the place I've been going to for years, man. Let's get over there. I take him. Of course, we get in and a few drinks got in the system. And, well, things took a turn for the worse. Deke looked over at this girl. And don't get me wrong, she was fine. But Deke looked over at her. He give her all the props in the world. You know what I'm saying? Saying how beautiful she is and everything else. What Deke didn't know is that the girl was there with her boyfriend. Then when he found out. Well, you know what? I'm going to let y'all. I'm going to let him tell y'all. I'm going to let him tell you. Well, of course, I'm hanging out with Truth, man. And, uh, he was right. We had a few drinks. And, uh, you know, I look up. And I see this fine specimen standing right behind him. I mean, the girl had more cakes than Duncan had. She had more than a toilet seat. I mean, shaped up real nice. So, I'm trying to hook Truth up because... You know, the boy's been single for a while, and I've been told me he needed him a lady companion. And then her boyfriend decides he wants to get upset, come over there talking to me any kind of way, talking about why I'm staying there as girlfriend. Well, I was like, hell, I didn't know she was in here with somebody. Well, you do now. You do now. I say, well, look, young man, back on up off of me. Now, I, I did look, but who wouldn't look? Your girl fine. You ought to take that as a compliment. Oh, he got mad. I was trying to keep the peace and not say nothing, but he kept on going, kept on going. Then he kept calling me old man. So I just politely let him know, I'd rather be old than ugly. Because I've been sitting here trying to figure out whether or not you pay this girl to be with her. Do you have pictures on her that's blackmailed? You got to be an athlete or rich or something like that because ain't no woman that fine for the miss with something that look like you. You was a different kind of ugly. Oh, now his chest poking out loud. He ready to fight. I said, don't get mad at me. I'm only being honest. You know you ugly. Every time you look in that mirror and do your hygiene, you know you ugly. You are unnecessary ugly. I have seen some ugly. But you in that small percentage of ugly that just don't make no sense. Never seen nothing look like it. I thought, I used to think that aliens from that movie, Alien was ugly. Man, you make them look good. Oh, now he get even more mad. And he'll track truth over here, putting his head down and everything else, trying to get me to stop. But he should know, I'm going to tell the truth. And I keep telling him all the time he needs to tell the truth. The boy was ugly. Looked like somebody took a waffle line and just set it on his face. Looked like a 400-pound fat woman fought it in his vicinity then he frowned up and his face never shook back. He looked like some small gold bond powder. His kind of ugly. His kind of ugly. If you ain't never seen his kind of ugly, then you don't want to. That's how I felt about the situation. Don't get mad at me because you look like a cross between Patrick Starr and, and Squidward. That's just how ugly you are. I was really just trying to come out and enjoy myself tonight. I was. I don't know what made me take Deke with me. But it is what it is. I did bring him out. But for him to go with that dude top like he did, man, that was just uncalled for. I mean, it got everybody in there laughing. So I'm just knowing to myself, this dude with his little pride, he probably going to cut up later on. 
Of course, at this time, he hadn't walked off him, man. As a matter of fact, he hadn't left his girl sitting there and went over to the other side of the club. Sat at the bar the rest of the night. But I kept my eye on him because I didn't want nothing to pop off just in case I got to jump up and protect Deacon in the meantime. But y'all don't understand, man. Deacon put me through a lot. A lot. One of these days, I just keep hoping that you're just going to calm down and you're going to say to yourself, you know what, this young man, I don't need to be putting him through this. I don't. No, I'm just going to behave myself. But unfortunately, Deacon ain't got that in him. I love him to death, but Deacon just ain't got that in him. Always getting me in something. But now it gets worse. So the thing over with. It's done. It's shutting the door down. We come walking outside. Well. Well. We leave out. I see a couple of my old friends. We just catching up on some good times. You know, reminiscing, laughing a little bit. I got my buzz on. I'm enjoying myself. You know, I didn't, I look over Truth enjoying himself. So I'm just like, you know, it's it's pretty cool night. Then, the same little girl come out there looking. Wave at me. I wave back to her. Then her boyfriend with his toe jam cracker looking ass come out there and start talking noise. Talking about he was going to f*** me up. Oh, he was finna stomp a mud hole in my Hold ass. Up. I told him I got news for you. You can walk over here. But you ain't walking back. He got puffed all out again. Oh, oh, man, don't make me go to the trunk. Don't make me go to the trunk. Fool, by the time you get to that trunk, I'm going to have six in your head. Don't play with me out here. Oh, now he come walking up. He ready to fight. So Truth jumped in for me. And, well, I'm going to need y'all to pray for Truth. Uh, he suffered a few injuries that night. You know, and I've been apologizing to him for a long time. And I, I hope he forgive me. But what I didn't know was how big this dude was until he got up close. Not only that, the dude took martial arts. Y'all would have seen what he was doing the truth. Man, y'all would have felt bad too. I was going to do something, but it just, it, you know, when you hit somebody like that, it make you forget what you was going to do. And then when you see somebody get hit like that, it make you realize like, hey, you know what? This fight ain't for me. I hated to leave him hanging, but you know, one of us had to drive home. Because I don't know if my boy was in the coma, he was asleep, or was he just pretending to be dead. Dad's whooping that boy put on him was priceless. Then he looked at me. He's like, this is what you about to get, old man. I just told him, hey, look, I don't want no trouble. You know, sometimes my mind just mess with me and I say stuff that's outrageous and out of control. So don't mind me, young man. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it at all. I just can't control it sometimes. Of course, I made that up on the fly. But I was not about to let him whoop my ass like he did true. Mm-mm, no sir, Bob. You were not about to put me to sleep like that. I have never seen a man get hit that hard. He hit Truth so hard, the car alarm went off. He hit him so hard when I looked over, my boy was sitting Indian-style picking grass. Do you understand me? On the way home, he had this little tick and this little twitch, and for some reason, he kept booing like a cow. I asked him if he wanted to get something to eat. You know what his response was? Tell him I'm going to call him back. So that means his wires was all kind of crossed up. Something got knocked loose. I felt bad for the boy. A good thing the situation was defused. But Truth sitting over there mad at me now. You know, he still ain't really been talking to me that much. But you know, Truth didn't know me for a while. He know sometimes I just don't care. I just do it. And I try to get him to live like that. People respect you more when you speak your mind. You know what I'm saying? Now, that little fella can't get mad at me because of the kind of ugly he was. And I was worried he had to rub some of that ugly off on Truth. But to look over, he was okay. You know, he might have been a little bruised up at the time, but when the swelling went down, you know, he was okay. The other dude, I don't care what he do in life, he's still going to be that terrible kind of ugly. I mean, very unnecessary. Looking at him is like staring into the eyes of Medusa because I started to call National Geographic on him. That would almost happen. Playing around with me. Now, 
I'm going to let y'all get back the truth. So you can hear how he felt about what happened. All Dick had to do was leave that man alone. I ain't worried about it. I don't know why he kept talking, 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 talking. And then I got to end up taking the brunt and taking all the beat down that was supposed to be for him. Again, this dude, Lucky, I love him. He do. I do respect my elders, and you know what I'm saying? I wasn't about to let him be in no kind of danger like that. Nah, nah, I wasn't going to let that happen to him. But y'all, Deke had a pistol. There's a bat in the back seat. He could have done something instead of just standing there watching me get beat down. I, I mean, to me, it's no excuse. He could have helped. I'm over here and I'm seeing clovers and hearts and horseshoes and pink rainbows, red balloons and everything else. The whole time I'm getting beat up and he's just watching. He didn't even yell out, stop. All he had to do was do something. Everybody else just sitting there, they video cameras out and everything else. So I know I'm already on Worldstar as it is. They probably got me on Facebook already. Maybe on Instagram or something. I don't know. But if the video floating around out there, then yeah, that's me getting my ass whooped. But if you look over in the corner, you see Deke just standing there looking. They got a nerd to want to check on me while we riding together. I asked him was he okay, y'all. Then I asked him if he sure he didn't need to go to the hospital. Of course, he kept saying he don't need to go, but I'm like, are you sure? Because it looked like you just got into a fight with a train and lost. He's going to tell me stop rubbing it in. I wasn't rubbing nothing in. I'm just saying I'm concerned about you. It looked like the whole football team ran over your face just now. And I know you got a concussion or something. I've been asking you all kinds of questions. And your answer has been crazy. I asked you, what was your favorite kind of m and You sat there and told me that fried chicken and macaroni and cheese is one of your favorite dishes. I asked you what city were you in. Your response to me was who keep ringing that doorbell. So like I say, are you sure you don't need to go to, you know what, matter of fact, we going. You know, these young kids, they, they just swear they can overcome everything that they don't need to do this. No, you need to go there and check and make sure it wasn't too much damage going on. Because you seem like you're in a lot of pain. I don't even know how you're driving right now. So do this for Deacon. Go ahead and go to the hospital so we can find out what's going on. So yeah, I did agree with Deacon. I went on ahead and went to the hospital. And, uh, you know, I'm, I think I was kind of like in and out of consciousness for the time being. And, uh, you know, kind of spooked. You know, I got knots here, got knots over there. You know, had me looking like hell boy. But anyway, I, I look up. And the doctor has this look on his face. So I'm like, well, doc, how bad is it? He's just looking at me like. I knew something was wrong when they called the chaplain in because I thought I was about to go. I thought they were telling me it wasn't nothing they can do. But he just prayed over me. And then the doctor told me I was, you know, I was going to make it. He just, he just had never seen anything so grotesque before. I said, well, what you mean? He said, man, you know, you got horns on your head right now. You know, your lip hanging down to your navel. Both of your ears are swollen, and I'm surprised you can even see out of them eyes. Like, I don't think we need reconstructive surgery, but I mean, you know, we don't need a prayer. We don't need something. I ain't never seen nobody get beat up like this. I said, well, Doc, you know, thank, thanks for rubbing it in. I said, no, I'm not rubbing it in, young man. It's just, jeez. How did you, did you get a lick in? Oh, as soon as he said that, now everybody won't laugh. It's funny. Oh, did you eat much pinching? Oh, did you so much a sneeze on him? No, I didn't get a chance to. I was taking up a digging. I didn't know that this man was going to be this big. I didn't even know he was going to swing on me like that. So while y'all sitting in here joking, you need to do something about this. Before I can get my sentence out, dude had to put something in, in the dog on IV they gave me. I was loopy afterwards. So I don't remember what I was saying, but Deacon Anderson was standing next to you. And he'll basically tell you what was going on. <laughs> you know what I, I, I didn't mean to laugh y'all but it was just the incoherent stuff he was saying after they gave him whatever that was in that deal 
This dude looked up at me and said, man, don't the moon look pretty tonight? How you see the moon and we inside the hospital? My boy told me he got 35 cents in his pocket. Go get him a taco. I said, bro, just get you some sleep. Then the dude started singing show tunes, doing the lyrics all wrong. Then I asked him, I said, well, what you think going wrong with you? You know what his words were? He going to look at me and say, you know what, Dick? I think I've probably been suffering from a little bit of Dane Bramage. I knew right then and there something was wrong. But I couldn't stop laughing at the stuff he was saying. Singing the McDonald's jingle out of nowhere. Then I'm looking at him. He wiggling his feet, moving his feet around. I'm like, why are you moving your feet? They hurting or something like that? He was like, no, I'm moonwalking. I say, but son, you're laying down in the bed. I say, no, I'm not. I'm on stage right now. You know, I, I, I feel bad for him. I felt bad, you know, at the time. I still kind of feel bad for what happened. I mean, we're trying to make it water under the bridge, but, you know, when, some, when you're standing up for somebody and you get beat down like that and they don't even help you, I can understand him being kind of upset with me. I really could. You know, I, I, it, it was tough to look down and, and see him like that. If y'all ever seen that movie, Another Professor, I mean, my boy lip was down lower than that. I didn't even recognize him. He looked like Rocky after the first fight. And I, I just got so concerned after that. The doctors went on ahead and gave him some pain medicine and told him to take a little rest. So we went on ahead and left out. He dropped me off at the house. And, uh, you know, I just told him I was going to see him later. And asked him if he wanted to come by tomorrow. We just going to cook something for him and, you know, let him relax. You know, because he stay by himself, you know. So we're just going to look out for him, make sure he relaxed, make sure he's taking his medicine on time, you know. Try to get him to feel comfortable. He agreed to come over, which I was glad. I was real glad. You know what, Truth, I love you, man. I, 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 and I'm sorry for what I got you into here. But you don't have to worry about nothing like that ever happening again. That was my last time. I'm not going to do that to you no more. Again, like I say, y'all see what I go through. But anyway, stay tuned for part five. Final part of this whole little saga. Things gonna get rather interesting again. Just know that my dog, you know, I, I like I say I love him, but Dick just got a way of putting me through some stuff, man. I, I still be having nightmares about that fight. Y'all got to understand, man, I'm not even, I can't even make this up. This dude hit me and I swear my head spun around about five times. Well, at least that's the story I'm sticking to. But anyway, appreciate y'all watching, man. Part five coming soon. Peace, love, and rhinestone gloves. It's the homie from the boot. Hashtag truth. Three fingers salute.